You ready to go? Are you ready to go, Tim? Yeah. All right. Hey, I'm Trenton Mason. I play for paintballfit.com uh, semi-pro. We're out here at beautiful Paintball Fit in Waxahachie, Texas. If you guys don't know, it's just a little south of Dallas. So definitely come check it out. We have multiple events and stuff like that to come out all all year long. So, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. What is your role with the team and the field of or business of Paintball Fit? Um, from my understanding, you're very heavily involved in Paintball Fit's concrete molding business. Okay, yeah. So, one, I am part owner. I run it with my family. I am also an owner of Paintball Fit, uh, Hydra Fit, which is our knee pads. We have all our merchandise, hoodies, all that good stuff. Uh, joggers, check those out. Um, but no, I'm owners in all of that. And then my role in all of it is... I run, we also have a manufacturing business, metal manufacturing business, which is, includes the concrete mold side of things. Uh, we also have a shoe repair shop that our mom and dad run and operate in town. So everybody kind of splits up. My role is I run the concrete side of things. I'm the main guy there running it business-wise, number-wise, and working there. And me and then my brother Brody. Uh, Johnny and Colt are the runners of Paintball Fit and Hydra Fit. And then our mom and dad, Sarah and JD, of course, we all intermingle, so they'll always be here, but they are their, their main business is the shoe repair. And so we try to split it off like that. There's a lot of us, so we got our hands on a lot of different things, but it, too many chiefs, not enough Indians trying to run one thing at a time, so we all split off and we have our own niches, and then we come together to help each other out. That's just how we run family, family stuff. But our names are all on all of it. We're all under the same LLCs. It's all, you know, a big family business. So when you say concrete mold business, like what exactly is that for people who have no idea? What are you building molds of? What do they do? What do you use them in? Okay, so mainly we do a whole variety of things. We don't necessarily always do concrete molds for our manufacturing business, but our bread and butter is like your uh, retaining walls. For you guys up north, it's really a big thing over there. Basically, it's just a big ass block of concrete, really, really, really heavy. Uh, and it, uh, for a northern and stuff like that, it keeps you from having to do a whole lot of dirt work for your uh, if you're building a house or something like that. You know, have a whole bunch of hills and stuff like that. You can just put a big concrete wall and then don't have to worry about it anymore. And then we run, we do parking lot bumpers. We do our uh, T walls, our security walls, stuff you see on the highways. Those wall, you know, basically the when you're driving down the highway and you see the concrete uh, barriers, we build the molds for those. We don't do the concrete work, but we do the metal side of things behind that. So we design and build all of that, ship it across all of the U.S. So you basically build something that the construction crew can put in place, fill it up with concrete, then remove it, and they have what they need in the shape they need. Correct. Yes. We, we just build a metal form for it, and then the construction company, concrete company, whatever, whoever buys it, they do whatever they need to do with it with the mold. We just sell them the, the mold itself. Sounds, uh, you guys are probably the only uh, family in paintball that has just that collectiveness uh, business. I mean, we got shoe repair, we got paintball store, paintball field, fabrication, clothing and apparel. <laughs> I mean, when are we, I mean, for a while we had Hydra Deal, so I guess we kind of had, like, uh, was Hydra Deal was part of y'all, right? Uh, no, it was actually, <laughs> because of the name, everybody thinks that, but no, Hydra Deal was not part of us. Okay. It was, uh, somebody else owned it. They came and, it's basically, they just came and wanted to sponsor us, and we were just working, because it was a great product. We loved it. That's why we pushed it, all, you know, we always sold it, and we always pushed it and spoke behind it, because it was great for when they were around. Uh, I don't think that they're in business anymore. I think uh, COVID hit them really, really hard. So they kind of fell apart after that, from my understanding. Uh, but no, yeah, we're, we're not a part of that. I know in the name, it does sound like we were running it, but. Well, I'm looking at the stickers on the register there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Register, <laughs> oh. tablet pad. So I'm like, oh, Hydra Till. Yeah, yeah, like I was saying, it, we were a big supporter in it because it was great. It was a great product. We loved it. Yeah. 
Uh, it's also great for your muscles. Like, even for me as a camera guy, like I'll carry one of those like pickle in a pack thing yeah. for cramps, like in the vinegar, salt, all that. Yeah, th they had a solution to our, our problem of constantly needing hydration and quick quickly because you know most paintball players are stubborn, so they don't hydrate very well, or they're, the substances they're drinking are not hydrating. I mean, most, <laughs> most paintballers on a cheap enough beer budget, there's a lot of water in that natty light, in that bush light. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in their mind. I mean, in Tin Man, everybody's hydrated. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, for sure hydrated. But no, yeah, uh, and then just touch on the fact that we starting a whole bunch of different stuff. We started as a family. I started playing paintball. Uh, I guess now it's been six, and this may be my seventh year going in, if my math is correct, seven years. Uh, I started when we started Paintball Fit. Before that, I was a welder. I started right out of high school, went out and uh, worked for a demolition company. I worked for uh, a locomotive company. Shout out Jay uh, Jeremy Zimmerman for hooking me up with that gig for a little bit there. But, uh... No, I was I was a welder. We didn't have we didn't play I didn't play paintball at the time. When I was younger, I was always around it. I was with always around uh I call him my dad, but it's my uncle in reality. The Lucals are, you know, I'm related to them. I'm their cousin, but I've grown up grown up with them since I was real little and that's so I call Serenjady my dad and mom and I call the Lucals my brothers. So, if I accidentally misstep and then somebody tries to correct me, that's what I'm meaning. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest, I used to approach it as four brothers. Yeah. I, I even think the first time I came here, like maybe two years ago now, um, when Johnny and them brought me out of here, I was like, oh, there's, there's four of your brothers. He's like, well, it's technically three brothers and a cousin, but... Yeah, if you want to get real technical about it, yes. That's but, exactly uh, how he went about it. He's like, you want to be real technical, but he lives with us. He's our brother. We raised the yeah. Right. So there's four brothers, I think, in right. my mind, in and, most paintballs. And so that's how we started was we were all doing, we branched off. I couldn't afford it. Like, uh, my actual mom couldn't afford me playing paintball. And as everybody knows, paintball is extremely expensive to play. And if you, especially if you want to be really good in it, you're going to have to put the money into it. But uh, no, like we, so we started all that. I started being a welder, making my own money and branching off doing my own thing. And then Johnny, JD came up to me, uh, basically, I think it was right when I was like 19-ish. And they came up to me and they're like, hey, we've got this gig. We found some land, like we want to start a paintball field. And that's always been my dream is to play with my brothers. I just, of course, never had money and they never had money to support me playing with them. And uh, so we found it, found this little gig, and we ran with it. <laughs> we went a whole bunch of debt, started this crazy field with this crazy idea to fund us being able to play as family. And uh, we started building the field by ourselves. We had great families and friends that helped us build. Uh, shout out to the Shipleys. I know you guys will watch this and enjoy it, but you guys are out there just as much as we were helping us out. Uh, you guys can't be around the scene as much now, but you guys were a big part of it. There was a lot of other people that I, you know, of course I could go on and on about the people that helped us. And forgive me, I can't list all, every single one of your names, but for the most part, like we built this from the ground up. I was right here with them, Johnny, Brody, Colt, every single day, just going hard at it. JD, Sarah, everybody, it was a whole family thing. And then that's what we started, and that was we just started chasing our dream. From that point, we this is what, on, the only way we were going to be able to fund what we do and how much we wanted to play and be able to create. And this is where it's become after seven years now. When it started seven years ago, did you ever envision it being what it is now? Absolutely. I'm a I'm a big per, big believer in if I'm going to do something. I'm going to go 100%. I, I don't like doing things just because I I hate that. I hate it a lot. So I 100% whenever I was like, if we're going to do this, I told Johnny and JD, like, yeah, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it legitimately. And, like, we're going to go pro and we're going to be really good at what we do. We're not going to branch off and do other things. Sure, we have fun playing the sport, right? But 
I'm not here wasting my time and my money and all of the good stuff, right? My like life, quote, quote unquote, to just goof around. Like we're here to be the best. Like I, I absolutely refuse to not be the best. I know a lot of people may take that the wrong way, but I'm I'm not. I don't like messing around. I don't like doing all of this work all the time. There's all of you have no idea how much time and effort it takes to do all of this stuff, right? But it's a lot, and that's all, all our family is doing it, so I'm not going to waste it just by messing around and having a good time. Like, I'm taking it seriously. This is my job, and we will be the best, and, like, that's just how I view it. So, yeah, I don't – I'm not a big fan of <laughs> – I obviously, we have fun, right? I'm not saying that I don't have fun playing this, right? I enjoy this. There's That's why I keep doing it, but at the end of the day, I'm absolutely here to take it as serious as possible. I mean, I think that has to be the mindset you have to have if you're going to go pro or go all the way. To It's a grind. It's a fight. There's many of other top-level teams that may not have exactly the same background or whatnot as Paintball Fit does, but on the field, paper to paper, like, there's... This might be one of the hardest semi-pro seasons ever, I would think, if mm. You look at DMG going back down to pro. I mean, you have you guys. You have Blast Camp. You have this GG Sports team, which is basically a conglomerate of the already disband distortion and maybe a pro player or two from the St. Louis area that are. And that's uh, CJ Cantor's team, right? He's coaching that. Is CJ, that... I think CJ Cantor's coaching it, and I think maybe even Jonah might be a little involved okay, like it's okay. kind of like that whole area thing um i know unger uh michael unger right from distortion went there along with i think haber uh jordan kohler those are solid guys yeah i love those guys yeah somebody <laughs> else there's i love unger unger's one of my favorite people in the world yeah unger's great haber i've played 10 man with him he played with me at the icpls uh for ac we were playing under ac empire i love that guy he's yeah. good good dude fun guy I love it anytime they come out to blast camp and fun to hang out with and film. Um, the touch base on that, yeah, absolutely. That I mean, to me personally, it's not anything compared to right. Like we, so just like the touch base. So the people that don't know, we came from being relegated, and we played a year in the pro pro division as us. There was you know you can point the finger or whatever at any things. We were the pro pro team. We got relegated, so we're it's same organization, same people, right? Uh, different coaches, but for the most part, it's all the same, same, right? And so, I've gotten a taste of what it was, and obviously, I had like an, a really good idea. Cause like, shout out to the Jacksons and TJ, arguably the most actually not even in my mind, it's not even arguable. If they are the most intelligent people in paintball. IQ wise, uh, Fuzzy Jackson, Jackson brothers. Fuzzy Jackson and John Jackson. A, a lot of people hate them, but I don't. They are extremely intelligent people. I learned so much from them. Uh, TJ as well. He was their mediator when they were all on AC Dallas, and of course they were here. So I've been bred by them, just listening to what everything they. It wasn't even me. They weren't teaching me, right? It was just me listening to them talk about paintball. Is how when I realized that's all. That's the key. Is like instead of somebody trying to tell you the stuff, just listen to people like the conversations about paintball, and you'll know who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. And those guys, hands down, and like, and I can say that confidently in my mind because I was in the pits at every event and I'm in the practices with all the you know the AC guys because that's what we were the, the underlings to those guys so like we were in their pits helping them and stuff like that so I had firsthand to be around every single pro team I got to hear all of Dynasty all of the impacts all of the heats right how, their ideology behind things the way they talked about things and I'm just I'm just gonna say it John and Fuzz and TJ are extremely intelligent compared to I would say 99% of the pro division. And so that's why the reason I'm saying the semi-pro division isn't 
it's not as advanced as them. Like I'm, now, when I say that, it's it's the elite I'm talking about in the pro. There's there's ten teams that are elite. The other ten teams, they're fighting, they're trying to learn, but they're not elite, right? There's and it's just the same as in any sport. There's going to be your elite teams, and there's teams that are learning and they're rebuilding, right? They're just not there yet. It hasn't clicked, and so the semi-pro teams, and that's how I base it off of, right? I've played a year in pro, so I know exactly how the elites are. I've played against them, right? I know their ideology behind it, so I have a good measuring stick of what's the best and what's not the best, and so I feel, yes, semi-pro, absolutely great players, but it's not the same as the elite pro, pro division, and Unfortunately, as years go by, we're going to start losing those people, and I don't necessarily feel like people are going to fill those shoes. And when I talk about fill those shoes, I'm talking about like the dynasties and stuff like that. There's not that group yet. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people learning and a lot of people going, just like how Dynasty did. They had to learn and go as they, right? They created their name. I just don't see it yet. There's some flashes, flashes in the pans, but then they kind of fall apart. And it, I'm just a very black and white person, so statistically speaking, you have to show results. You can you can talk about, oh, they're trying hard or whatever, but results show more than anything. And that's all that matters at the end of the day is the result, the end result. Constant results. Constant right, and consistency, consistency. Correct. correct. And I think that's kind of a good thing to point out with the top level pros, right? Like I can take any probably semi-pro team and put them against say dynasty and two out of 10 times that semi-pro team might win, but they're not going to win the other eight out of 10. And it's that majority consistency. Um, I think your brother uh, Colt talked on it some mm -hmm. where he said uh, the biggest difference between semi-pro and pro is the team's ability to recognize and change the game style and play mid-match, knowing, hey, these guys went to pocket. These guys are attacking the outsides. They're trying to get wide. These guys are holding lanes. They're dug in. They're, you know, you figure out the zones and the control and the depth of it. It's almost, you know, there's dimensions of paintball. You have the first dimension, the second dimension, the third dimension, and then the pro level is when you include that fourth dimension. It's just knowing at any time you can adapt your play toss style to what's coming at you. And it's that, and that, it's a great point what Colt talked about, but there's also, it's not only you adjusting to it, but it's recognizing all of that. And the, the top level elite players recognize that immediately, right? And a lot of it has to do with, it's not necessarily their intelligence level, it's just their trial by fire, oh, sorry, trial by fire experience right they've done that a thousand times they've done that ten thousand times right versus you're playing somebody who hasn't experienced that they maybe experienced it for like the fourth time and they just don't recognize it yet right but these guys in the elite level they have all of those years of experience and the, the biggest part i think of as the elites is they've recognized it what those things are right those signs because that's all it is in the match. You, fought, you feel the flow of it, and you understand, and then you adjust. And semi-pro teams do not have that ability. There's not a single semi-pro team that I feel like is accurately able to do that, right? I mean, the top-level ones, if you want to touch base on it, right? Blast Camp, they're really good at what they do. But adjusting, they cannot adjust. They're not very good at it. And it's the, it's the same, right, is with distortion, same thing, right? And I was able to take a lot of that from World Cup for me being injured so I'm not playing and being able to adjust it and understand it more, right? That's why we did we came back on distortion because they were just doing the same thing, right? They weren't adjusting, and so then you just read it and adapt, right? We I, I adapted doing se several different things, and then we were accurately able be able to come back on them because they didn't adjust to what we changed. And I think that's the biggest thing with elite players is when you do something once to them, you won't be able to do it a second time. And if you do it a second time, there definitely won't be a third because then they'll win that bout, right? They, they're able to adjust on the fly mid-match. There's a lot of players I feel like in the semi-pro division 
that can, after the match, tell you, oh, yeah, I should have done this and this and this. That's the easy part. It's already said and done with. You have all the cards laid out, so now you can pick, see the bigger picture. But the elite players of the pro division can see that in the match. They can see and adjust immediately. Or at least attempt to adjust to it, right? But if you can't even recognize what that flow is, then you can't even begin to fathom what the change needs to be. And that's the biggest thing I feel like the difference was is with elite players in the pro division versus the semi-pro division. They're just, there's just not players like that. And I know and I've watched a lot of them in my short span of playing, right? I've only been playing for seven years, but I've been around all of the right people, I feel like, to understand a good grasp of it. Obviously, I don't know everything, clearly, right? Because I don't show the results. But I still feel like I have a good grasp of it. And so, like, that's what, in my personal opinion, that's how it feels like. And all, I'm not picking on Blast Camp or I'm not picking on Distortion, right? But those are just two big ones that are really good at what they do. And that's just my personal opinion on those guys. I love those guys to death, right? I have I have good relationships with every single one of them. Blast Camp guys, the Distortion guys, I have friendships with all of them. Well, I think those are the fair teams to bring up. The top four semi-pro teams last year was Notorious, who is now pro. Hmm. You guys, Blast Camp, and Distortion. So, I mean, if we're going to have a discussion to go much further down the list than the top four, would it make sense? So, <clears throat> I don't think anyone takes shoes taking shots at Blast Camp or Distortion and bringing this up. I mean, it's that's your competition this past season. I mean, those are the guys that, if they step on the field and they're going to beat fit, those are who are going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, I mean, any dog can have his day right but on that consistency level they finished in the top four correct and even and then like touching base on that too right like we're now we're going to go gearing the conversation towards how the season went i feel like at the end of the day right one well, i'll go ahead and say it because i've heard everybody else talk about it i hate double points i don't think it's a good idea uh from so from a business standpoint, as in Excel, right, as the business standpoint, absolutely you have to do it because you have to get people to play your event and you have to give them a reason to fight and want to go to the, continually go to the next event, right, go to World Cup to play. So I feel like double points is great for anything other than semi-pro and pro. Whenever there's so much more on the stake at stake than what it is, semi-pro and pro cannot have double points. And purely because you should reward the more consistent team and not throw a wrench in the plan of double points like that when there's so much on the line, right? Semi-pro, you're fighting for you're fighting for a pro spot. You're trying to be in the elite. And then for pro, right, they're starting to throw a lot of money in there. That's big for a pro team to fight for especially one of the lower ones that don't have funding well i think if you i think just winning world cup was like 40 or 50 grand so that's funding is, that's funding the nxl season not practice and travel but event and pain if say you're uprising new york extreme the brooklyn bears is now yeah it, it helps you it keeps that team alive that there's there's so much money in that goes into paintball and not a whole lot of return right you have to be insane to consistently try to do this without having proper funding behind it. And there's not a whole lot of pro teams don't have that funding. So that's why you see a lot of guys leave or they get lost to the organization because they go, they're chasing that money, right? And so I'm, not, I'm never going to knock somebody for chasing money. That personal preference, whatever, personal opinion, but I'll never knock somebody for doing that. I personally wouldn't do it. I personally don't agree with it. But if you got to do it, you've got to do, you know, I, we chose a way of how we were going to fund it, and that's just to build the field and, and cre create our business. business. Correct. And then, like, so, like, that's how we chose to do things. People, obviously, not every single person can build a field, right? But we were in a, a situation to be able to do that, so we took it just seized it and went with it. But, no, yeah, like, I think double points is dope for anything other than that, right? Because then, for a business standpoint, that still makes sense. For NXL to keep doing their thing, to get people to keep playing the events, because that's the biggest thing, right? You're, it's a business at the end of the day. You need to have people consistently 
play your events and want to keep playing. Don't play two or three and then go, well, I'm out of the race anyways. There's no point, right? I'll just go play, you know, say, per se, a local league instead of playing NXL. Um, now, I think a good curveball here, though, would be the team that plays the season and has the lowest average of points either gets a skid for free to practice hmm. or gets entry to the next NXL season on the NXL. And I think that would be a great, right, for the masses, right? You think of the, the, your lowerlings, so to speak, is like, I th that could be a good good one, right? I, hell yeah, right? You, you know, sure, you go and ba bash your head against the wall and you get dead last, but then you get something out of it to keep wanting to come back. Or at least to, like, pay you for your efforts to try harder again. Right. Like, and maybe there's a rule, like, you can only get it once in each division, so that way there's not a team purposely always coming in last to get free entry because... Paintballers, we love them, but no, oh, they, they'll absolutely do it. Do some used car salesman math somehow, <laughs> yeah. somewhere there fast with it. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I like your idea of saying like we have to do something for the guys who come in last or the lower finish, but you still have to raise first place to at least make it a net positive. I mean, a net positive for the event because then we're still talking about how much did you pay in practice paint, how much did your guys travel for practice did you bring a team in did you go to another team like i mean at the end of the day it's it's a hundred thousand dollars to be a competitive top level paintball organization right when we're talking semi pro to pro what you it's a hundred thousand dollars if it comes out of your pocket a sponsor's pocket uh, together split whatever i mean that's yeah the, that's the dollar sign fun. still changes or it's not changes but stays the same somebody's correct. paying the bill correct and, uh, yeah, I mean, those are good points. And you can't make the sport cheaper, unfortunately, because a lot of the cost is, it's not necessarily the sport's fault. Travel, food, hotels. I mean, you're looking, again, $35 cases of painted events. I remember playing in 1999 when a case of Marbleizer was like 107 or so, right? Like, hit me up with 35 Scotty. I love it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the best. Um... So, yeah, I, and people still complain that it needs to be cheaper, but, like, there's no physical way to make 2,000 paintballs, box it, and ship it, and keep it in a refrigerated truck and pay all the employees involved for less than, th like, it, there's not, yeah, it's just not. It. <laughs> and it's the same, right, as your, like, your local fields and stuff like that. People complain about prices and blah, 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 this, that, and the other, right, but it's... You have to, it, that goes with along with the same thing as a, a field owner. You can't, the, the business itself has to stay alive so you have a home to come play to, right? It's not, we're not making a killing. I can tell you firsthand, we're not making any kind of money that you would go home about and go, hell yeah, right? But we do this because we love the sport and we are a family and we do this and we want to create our own environment and that's what we've done and we always will do we create our own environment and we take care of our own people right we're not going out here trying to steal a whole bunch of people we're not trying to get people to fly in blah 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 if you want to absolutely if you don't go play somewhere else that's fine we don't care about that if you want to be here we're going to treat you like one of us like our family and that's just that has been our standpoint and that's always how it is JD, Johnny, and Brody went around to a lot of different scenes, uh, and I was around there too, and the environments were pretty crazy back then, right? And everybody knows it. Everybody that's been around, you know how it is at the field, but we decided we didn't want that. We wanted to have something that has a better turnaround for people that first came out versus people that's come been here 20 times. They all have the same experience and the same good time. We want to pe get people playing paintball. That's the biggest thing, right? Playing our style of paintball. If you want to go play paintball somewhere else, that's great. Go play in woods. Have fun. Play paintball. That's all we ask. Just go play paintball. And so, like, but for speedball side of things, right, tournament style, this is what we do. We're just going to specialize in that. And we want to create an environment that makes people want to come back and want to keep trying. And we always, we will always take care of our own. That's, that's our bottom line. We take care of our own.
I think you guys have killed it here. And I think, uh, like I was talking to Johnny, uh, part of what I think just adds to that experience of paintball fit or that feeling is that as a tournament player, you're not going to be second fiddle to a private birthday party. No. You know, they don't exist. Like, there's... And I I understand when you look at all the other paintball... A lot of the other big paintball fields in the world, uh, birthday parties are the bread and butter. Open plays are bread and the butter. The rentals, the full price payers, those are the guys that keep the business alive. Correct. But paintball fit is literally three speedball fields. Nothing else. No birthday parties. You can come here and get a nice EMAC rental, maybe an Ether 2, and come play some speedball, but that's it. You're mixing right. in. Versus... Other places, you know, field owners would be like, hey, guys, this birthday party has to be on the field for, you know, 20 minutes because they paid me all this money. And you're like, well, what about all the money we pay you all year long? Right. And, yeah, and I, but I get it from those, those field points stand of view or, like, those fields uh, standpoints. You, you have to do that. You have to treat your customers that are keeping you alive great, just like why we keep our keep our customers right we create we create an environment we we make them our family because at the end of the day they are what helps us do our thing right we love what we do and they're the reason why we are able to keep doing it and so that's a hard one right you have to sure i feel like some fields could do that do it better right you have you know your private fields a lot of standpoints on fields and i understand their viewpoint is Tournament paintball does not make you that much money as a field stand, a field owner. It just doesn't. There's no. It doesn't make sense logistically if you're only looking at money. If you're not crazy like us and you only are looking at the money, the the bottom line. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to have your rec ball side of things where you make a good amount of money versus your speedball thing where everything's got to be cost effective because right, you're shooting more. You're burning through equipment like crazy, right? Because you, your cleats, your arm pads, your knee pads, your pants, jerseys, you're ripping them all up. You're playing because you're playing a ridiculous amount of paintball. It's, and that's that's why it logistically it doesn't make sense for some people. Unfortunately, that's just how they see it. Obviously, we can't tell everybody how to view things and how to change. You know, you can't change the world just by yourself. You can't change everybody's mentality just by yourself. So that's why we stick to kind of our own thing and lead by example. If people like what we do, they're going to emulate that, right? Like if we've seen it at a couple of different places, uh, you know, shout out Official Paintball around here in Texas. They do a killer job of not only treating their uh, rec recreational side of things, they treat them and they have phenomenal facilities over there, but they also treat their tournament players, right? They're starting to... They treat both of them the same. They don't put one to the back burner, right? They have a great community. Robert Jordan is a huge part of that community over there, and he they treat everybody the same, and uh, they do a really good job of it. Um, there's a couple of other places around here. You know, X Factor I know does a pretty pretty good job. There's a whole lot of uh, tournament side coming out of X Factor. Obviously, the pro team, but all of their underlings over there. There's not a, a, a crazy amount that plays under there, but that's just how it is at the moment it's only growing from our standpoint of things paintball is only getting bigger uh it's not going away anytime soon but yeah you it makes sense that they have to do it like that unfortunately statistically speaking but yeah you just at some point or another you've got to pick your battles and what you feel like is good and what you feel like is not and you, you got to run with it so I'm never going to knock anybody else that does anything like anything else because at the end of the day, you've got to run your business and you've got to put food on the table. So whatever you feel like you need to do, do that, and then let the people decide after that. Right. The customer is always going to choose. Right. So is there anything you would like to add? Any changes you'd like to see to paintball, favorite gear improvement, anything you want to tell people? Or? Hmm. I feel like... I see this a lot, right? Because like I'm a big uh, person that I like to just go and help people, especially here. I can't help a whole lot of other people because I'm not around them because I'm always here. You know, seven days out of the week I'm here. Uh, but 
I try to help people understand because I see it. I see a lot of people not get why, why they should continue to play paintball, why they should continue to pursue their passion in tournament paintball. Or I see them hitting their head against the wall and they just can't break through and they just, they're getting down on themselves. And the biggest thing that I can say from just my point of view, obviously I haven't done the great things, right? I haven't, I'm not in the pro league doing phenomenal things right now. No, I'm still hitting my head against the brick wall as well. But I have been able to have some some success and a lot of different wins and, you know, throughout the divisions, play 10 man, five man, all that good stuff. And the only thing I would like to say to people is like, it, in the tournament side of things, obviously I can't speak of the recreational side because I don't actually play that. But it's fun, I just don't play it. But tournament side of things is you just have to trust your instinct and keep playing, right? Just don't give up on yourself just because it gets hard. You got to choose and decide, do I want to do this? Do I want to make this my dream? And be realistic with yourself. Don't ever lie to yourself. Do I want to continue to play? And you decide right then and there. Make it just... Don't think of all the others, all oh, this and that, and right? Make it as simple as that. Do I want to continue to play paintball, and do I want to be the best at it? Do I want to do this? And it, whatever your answer is, you need to decide there, right? And then if it's yes, then just do it. Like, keep playing. You have to play. You have to keep playing. And you have to, and that's just speaking from personal experience. You just have to play and just lose and lose and lose and lose and lose until finally one day it just clicks and you start winning right but you have to have the mentality to understand that your nose is on the grindstone and you keep going like you have to you have to keep going you have to do that because if you let yourself if you let yourself be your biggest enemy you'll never succeed and that's even with anything in life right you have to tell yourself that you're going to do it and you have to make the conscious decision to say, yes, I'm going to do this. And that's my biggest thing that I preach to all my guys out here. I shout out uh, the Tribe Paintball team. I've been working with them. They've been having some success in the D4 season. Uh, they're going D3 next year and I'll be working with them in local leagues. Uh, shout out to Greed. I help them a lot. I've been with them. I've played a bunch of tournaments with them when I was, you know, in their earlier years. So I've helped that organization a lot. Um, Shut up, we're trying. I've played with those guys. Those are some of those guys that keep going, right? And that's what I preach to them the most is you just have to. You, I know sometimes you think to yourself it doesn't make sense. But at the end of the day, when all it's said and done, you did something and you chose you were going to do it, and then you accomplished it, and that's the best feeling in the world. And so, like, that's the dream I'm chasing. So if you want to keep doing that, you have to chase that dream, too. All right. Uh, who, who do you want to box for YouTube? Call out somebody. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Either 1v1 on the field or box. No, no. Bring in the towel. No, I don't want to box anybody. I, I love everybody off the field. He <laughs> said he, uh, he heard he wanted... You want it, uh, to f see what it'd be like to get tackled by Chris Odom? Absolutely not. That man is too big and too big to be playing around. I will not be tackled that man. <laughs> <laughs> I got him to call out Aaron Rodgers yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that goes, maybe we'd have Aaron Rodgers versus Chris Odom at paintball fit 1v1 I, in a Mech X-Ball tournament where they lead their own teams to battle. I will facilitate all of that. I'm all about that. I'll be on Aaron Rodgers' team. <laughs> so, so if you could uh, let people know if they cannot find it at paintballfit.com, maybe where they can go shop at Lone Wolf and get it. Oh. We are moving as a sponsor to the XTPO. Hey, that is the only place to go is lonewolfpaintball.com. If you can't find it here where we have all of this great gear and we don't have it on stock, lonewolfpaintball.com will take care of you. They literally have everything. They even have Pizzo. They even have Pizzo's Pizzo. Pizzas. <laughs> Is it boom treated? <laughs>